Well, if I'm in the ruins, I'm going to start making uh, some more videos on these. It's a popular subject, but unfortunately there's just a lot of bad information on the internet out there. Uh, this video is just going to be leading into the others as an intro. There are three runic alphabets, uh, basically. Um, most of you know this already, but this video is for the beginners or maybe the people who want to make runes into a tattoo or something or some artwork, and they want to make sure that they use the appropriate runic alphabet uh, depending on uh, what their purpose is. The runic alphabets are the Elder Fortaik, the Younger Fortaik, the lesser known but still very valuable Anglo-Saxon Futaik, and that's uh, at least the three uh, alphabets that scholars have been able to confidently distinguish uh, into full-on writing systems. So the basics are, the Younger Futaik is the alphabet of the Viking Age. It was used in Scandinavia from the 700s to the 1200s, we can say, but uh, you know, found on some inscriptions and magical tools after that. But basically the Viking Age. The Anglo-Saxon Futaik was used in Anglo-Saxon England from about the 500s until the 1000s. And the Elder Futhar, that's the third and final one, that's the oldest one, that was used from the 700s and uh, before all the way up to about 2,000 years ago. And it's the one that all the others are descended from, and that one was used by all the Germanic tribes to some extent, which I will explain in a minute. And that's kind of what I wanted to speak about in this video, not going too deep into the history. Uh, I'm just speaking about which runic alphabet would be the best for you and your purpose, you know, and your ancestry, the time period, the language, and just really relating it to kind of the reason that you plan on using it for and using the proper language and format so we can get it as historically uh, as accurate as possible for your tattoos, arts, crafts, magic, whatever, carvings. First tip, um, I see way too much Elder Futhark, um, and it especially bugs me when I see people using these Elder Futhark runes to symbolize something that just is not there. Or even when they're using rune casting, like runes. Now, I love runes for divination. I did it a, a lot myself a few years back. I got very into it, and I get along with people who do it. I have nothing against them. The thing that bothers me is about the confidence that some of these people have about the meanings and the symbolism of uh, these elder uh, Futhark runes when 90% of it is just a modern invention and not as ancient as a lot of people claim. For the Elder Futhark, we don't even know the original names for a lot of these runes, okay? The Younger Futhark and Anglo-Saxon Futhark, different story. Uh, we know about those, the Younger Futhark, we have a couple rune poems from later on in time that gives us a quick little uh, rhyme and description of the rune. We also have a much earlier source from the 9th century giving their name, so we know that these, uh, these records of the Younger Futhark are going to be accurate. We also have rune poems for the Anglo-Saxon runes. And that was believed to be composed in the 600s, so that's actually the oldest one by far. And that one also, same thing, gives the names of the rune and a couple of lines of poetry uh, describing uh, what they are. Same thing. But like I said, the Elder Futhark, we don't have those sources. We have basically nothing uh, conclusive in the Elder Futhark. I believe there, there are some uh, runic inscriptions that refer to a few of these runes by name. We also have a source from the 800s recording the names for the Gothic uh, runic letters, which would have been somewhat similar. And also the Anglo-Saxon rune poems would have been somewhat similar uh, to names and meanings as the um, Elder Futhark. But at the end of the day, uh, the Elder Futhark is ultimately reconstructed. And some of the meanings you're going to find online are just completely wrong. And even the ones that we do find in the proper books and, and you know, scholarly articles, even they are very uh, debated by the scholars, okay? My point is, use the Elder Futhark. Great, use the Elder Futhark to write out something, words and phrases, that's awesome. But I would try not to use Elder Futhark letters for their symbolism, 
Because we just don't know. Don't get an Elder Futhite rune tattooed on you because it, oh, it symbolizes hope and strength and connection to Odin. <laughs> because that's all a bunch of shit made up in the past few decades by some Wicca person, uh, most likely. If you want to get runes tattooed for their symbolism and individual meeting by themselves, um, it's a great idea to use the Younger Futhite or the Anglo-Saxon Futhite, and you can even read these rune poems yourself and decide yourself what the symbolism is in those. But remember, that's just the Anglo-Saxon and the Younger Futhite that we have the rune poems for, and that they're the ones that we know uh, confidently the um, uh, actual name of the rune and their uh, meanings. So other than that, on to the next parts using uh, runes to write out a full word or phrase uh, in their original language that they would have been used. That's what I help you all with on Patreon, and I think that's a fantastic idea. Um, it's great uh, to choose the right language for the right runic alphabet, which I know a lot of you guys are interested in. Let's start with the Younger Futhark. Younger Futhark was used in Scandinavia from about the 8th to the 12th century, so the language we are looking at here is Old Norse. The language of the Vikings, okay? And if you find an Old Norse word or phrase and you would like that tattooed on you, or a Viking proverb or something like that, then in that case, Younger Futhark would be the proper uh, runic alphabet to use. The Anglo-Saxon Futhark is next. Uh, this alphabet was used in Anglo-Saxon England from the 5th to the 11th centuries. So for here, we're looking at the Old English language, guys. Actually, a very, very beautiful language uh, with some different dialects, of course, um, uh, depending on where it was from. And don't forget, they were pagan too, up until about the... 700s, um, depending on where in England they would have been, and they were using the Anglo-Saxon Futhark like other pagans would have been doing uh, at the similar time. Also, though, uh, a forgotten, often forgotten place where this uh, runic alphabet was used was in Frisia. This same alphabet, different people, different language, but from the runic inscriptions we have found in Old Frisia, so modern-day Netherlands and Belgium, it's essentially the same alphabet as the Anglo-Saxon Futhark uh, was used, um, with some different regional differences, of course, um, but it's essentially the same alphabet they have found with most of those inscriptions, so I would really love to see more English people, but also more people with Dutch ancestry getting tattoos or creating artwork with this Anglo-Saxon slash Frisian uh, runic alphabet. And the proper languages to use if you want to use the Anglo-Saxon uh, or Frisian Futhark runes is of course Old English and Old Frisian. But yeah, really, really beautiful and underutilized uh, runic alphabet. And remember, this is actually the largest runic alphabet with the most letters and also the oldest one that we have the most information about the uh, runes names and uh, original meanings as I mentioned before. Now we're getting to the Elder Futhark, where the other two are descended from. The earliest inscriptions of these come from about the 1st century, all the way up until the 8th century, but we think it could be older than that. It's just that that's all that has been found pretty much in the archaeology, and these have been found from a much, much wider area. Then the other runic inscriptions, they have been found from as far north as Lapland in Scandinavia, as far south as Germany, even in southern parts of Germany, even England and Frisia, and as far east as Romania and Hungary um, in the Gothic settled areas. And these are all uh, Germanic uh, peoples, of course, places where the Germanic peoples lived. And the languages that we actually have uh, preserved Elder Futhike runic inscriptions in are uh, Proto-Norse, which is one, which is the ancestor kind of just before um, Old Norse, when Scandinavia was transitioning from the Proto-Norse language into the Old Norse language, and also from the uh, Elder Futhark to the Younger Futhark. There are a couple of Elder Futhark inscriptions in Old High German too, there are also plenty of uh, inscriptions in a language called uh, Alemannic, what they say. It's kind of like a standard recorded language for the confederations of the Germanic tribes in the migration period. Um, they, they were called the Alemanni, 
or all men uh, confederation of tribes and then of course we have inscriptions of Eldefuthaik in Proto-Germanic which is the ancestor of all the Germanic languages and we also have some uh, runic inscriptions in Gothic um, like an East uh, Germanic language uh, those are pretty much all the languages those five that the Eldefuthaik has been recorded in could have it been recorded in other languages? Yeah, sure, it could have been used by the Lombards in Italy. Elder Futhar could have been used by the Franks or Burgundians in modern-day France area. They could have been used by the Vandals in Spain or the uh, Heruli in the Balkans or any of the other Germanic tribes that migrated all over Europe. Um, the Elder Futhar could have been used. We just have not found any runic inscriptions in those areas. Uh, but of course they would have used it at some point in time, so the answer is yeah, sure. If you are French, for example, and you want to use the Elder Futhar to write an old Burgundian word, cool. Or if you are in Romania and you have an old uh, Gothic word that you like and you want to write that in Elder Futhar as a tattoo, that's cool. They might not be exactly spot on with how they would have been written at the time. It would have been different from region to region, but there's not really any significant evidence to show that these people had a different full writing system that we can classify as a different uh, runic alphabet. Like I said, there might have been, but as far as we know, all the Germanic tribes uh, at some point would have used this Elder Futhark runic alphabet, even though we have no evidence of it. If you want to play it safe, you can take the phrase you want, you know, tattooed on your body or what you want painted onto your portrait or something translate that into the Proto-Germanic language and then write it into Elder Futhark runes because no matter where you're from, if you do have Germanic ancestry, at least some of your ancestors were originally from this area speaking Proto-Germanic and using Elder Futhark at least to some degree. It would have been one elder in the village at least. Maybe not everybody was literate and could write these runes, but they would have at least had contact with these runes and recognized them when they saw them. Now, the language is difficult. Uh, Proto-Germanic is reconstructed at the end of the day, meaning we only have a few fragmented texts of what that language actually looked like. But scholars have used uh, these uh, inscriptions that they have found in Elder Futhark and also compared it with other languages that are descendants of Proto-Germanic and they've reconstructed it uh, so we can be, have pretty good certainty what it would have looked like. This is also part of what I do on my Patreon. What I do is translate uh, words or phrases into Old Norse or Proto-Germanic and then I convert it into the proper runes. You guys can all do this by yourself, you don't need me, that's just something I offer to uh, patron supporters, but um, you can all do it yourself, I can leave a couple dictionaries like that in the sources uh, uh, down below. One final tip, um, you can write these things out uh, phonetically. A lot of people um, translate the words as they are written in our modern languages and they just look up the Old Norse or Proto-Germanic word and they write that down with our Latin alphabet and then they just switch out the runes letter for letter and on the vast majority of runic inscriptions from ancient times that's not how it was written down. The majority of the time all of these runic inscriptions that uh, we have are phonetic which means one rune per one sound. Imagine like you're a kid just learning how to write. You don't know how to spell the actual word. You know, people didn't have classrooms 1,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago that taught the correct spelling for things back then and perfect punctuation and grammar, okay? If they needed to write something, they would need to sound it out, say it out loud, and wrote down the uh, letters that they um, felt should go in that position. So writing these things uh, phonetically uh, would make it even more uh, historically accurate, even though it kind of looks like a five-year-old kid wrote it uh, uh, today and this brings us to our final tip don't stress about it whatever you write even if you're the number one rune expert in the world you're going to have some people who get butt hurt and start complaining about it okay man people just love to get pissy about runes I don't know what it is like hey 
I like to bitch and whine too, okay? I like to bitch and whine too when it comes to historical accuracy, but I can promise you the runes are just not one of those things to get worked up about. It should not be the last hill to die on, and it's not something uh, worth uh, getting mad about and criticizing everybody's little tiny mistakes that they make on their runic inscriptions or tattoos. Look, even scholars with a lifetime of education can't agree on the translation of the runic inscriptions, okay? They're debating it all the time, there are always contrasting ways to spell it out and write these things, and they're found all over different ways in the archaeology, and of course uh, variations from language and place to place, regional uh, styles, and a lot of it is even just a plain uh, bunch of gibberish like you see here. <laughs> so there is really no one way to write out uh, runes the proper way. You have to understand something about the cultures uh, that use these runes. They were largely illiterate, so they didn't know how to read and write. And if there was some elder in the village that did know how to write runes, he probably would have had this spelling proficiency of a five-year-old kid from today, right? Just learning how to spell. He just would not have been using these often enough to become a master spelling bee champion, okay? So this is the reality. Uh, perfect spelling and grammar in uh, runic inscriptions did not matter that much back then. But don't for a second think that that made our ancestors dumb. Maybe that was true, the only person in the village that knew how to write was a 70-year-old man who had the spelling of a 5-year-old child today. Um, but this absolutely does not make them dumb. I promise you, every person in that village 2,000 years ago would have been more intelligent than 99% of people today living in a big city, okay? We today need to write things down because our memories are so bad we can't remember it. Whereas ancient humans, tribal humans, and even people around the world living in rural communities today, they can remember things in their head like crazy. Hours and hours of poetry and stories and epic sagas, when we today, we can't even remember our own best friend's phone number by heart, okay? In the Viking Age, they did a bunch of very smart things. They built ships, houses, large buildings, castles, they navigated seas foraged thousands of plants and remembered what they all did. They could tell the time, the date, they did math, to trade, sell, buy, have complex legal disputes. They had understanding of, you know, complex economies of a country, taxes, international relations, all these types of things they were able to do without being able to read and write, okay? They were not dumb, our ancestors were smart. Imagine how quickly our so-called advanced civilization today would fall apart if we didn't have the internet. And may the gods help us if we all of a sudden forgot how to read. Our societies would just absolutely crumble. So our ancestors managed all these great things without being able to read and write. So remember that. And yeah, if you did the... Uh, work and you've came up with the right word and put the research and you made a runic tattoo on your body and someone complains about it and they tell you it's wrong tell them to suck it <laughs> that's the point i'm trying to make as a matter of fact if we're trying to get things historically accurate oh it's almost better that you just sound it out and write it phonetically like a five-year-old does who is just learning to write because that's what it would have been done in the Viking Age and before, and that kind of gives it a little bit more magic, doesn't it, when we're first learning how to write and creating these symbols and meanings with just a, a scratch of the pen or a scratch of the stone or tattoo art on your uh, arm. So that's it. Have at it. Hope this video helps. Don't stress. Have fun and focus your energy on the most useful historical information like language and time period, and don't get uh, caught up in the small details. Those are my final tips for today. Hope you enjoyed. We see us next time.